<laughs> All right, let me introduce you to Buck Sexton. He is the national security expert for the Blaze. He joins me now to discuss the latest in the Middle East and the military buildup near Syria. And uh, Buck, I'm, I'm, you ought to be glad that I didn't have your email address this weekend because I was looking for it fast and furious the whole time because I, I'm seeing, I'm getting um, calls from friends in the military and um, I'm seeing the reports and the buildup and I don't know what's normal and what's not. What you're seeing on the uh, borders in Turkey and, um, and uh, Jordan, what you're hearing from your sources, is this a normal buildup for something incredibly small? No, Glenn. Actually, we can show you on a map um, just what's happening here. We know that John Kerry, of course, is working towards here, this please. agreement with the Russians that most people recognize already is going to fall flat on its face. It's just a question of time, and it buys both Assad and the Obama administration time, which is very important to both parties. Wait, you wait, see here wait, on wait, 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 wait. Why is that important for uh, the president? It gives him more time to look bad, quite honestly, because people aren't for this. Well, it depends, Glenn. It depends on whether the end state for the president is actually to do something at the end of all of this or if he just wants to run out the clock on the public's attention of how unbelievably inept he's been with this policy in the past few weeks, which has really become kind of a bipartisan consensus now. Right. But if I show you here, this is, gives you a rough idea of what U.S. force dispersal looks like right now in the AO, in the area of operations of Syria. We have the Sixth Fleet over here. Uh, obviously, plenty of firepower there. You're talking about carriers. You're talking about uh, 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 destroyers. You have some training forces in here. And then you have Injerlik Air Base, very big in Turkey, U.S. airfield there. You have British airfields here in Cyprus. Now, they're not going to be going for that big of an area if they do strike. This is a lot of hardware condensed in one area for, let's go to the next map. You'll see what I mean. This is something that most people don't generally recognize. And if we show the Follow the one. map, you'll see <laughs> what I mean. Um, that, that most of the, these are supposed to be the chemical weapons facilities where they're produced. This is just a guess, and this was, uh, I think, the Associated Press produced this one. But all the population centers, Glenn, are along the western part of the country here. Uh, this is Aleppo, Homs, Hama, Damascus, Dara. It all comes down here in this corridor. So any major bombing raids, any major activity, missile strikes, would have to be in this area. And that means two things. One, it's not a big area. Two, you've got a very high density of population there, and also Assad can put his airfields and his anti-aircraft in pretty much one, uh, along one stretch of this country and defend it effectively. The rebels have this. The rebels have this. Guess what? That's desert. Nobody really cares all that much about that area. Um, and then if we go to the next one, though, Glenn, this is what's really interesting. This shows you, okay, what I showed you before were the military deployments around Syria, right? Cyprus, Injerlik Air Base in Turkey, you've got radar installation, you've got some training forces in here, in the hundreds, not a whole lot. Well, maybe a little more than that, Glenn. We're not really sure just how many there are. It depends on whose reports you take. But what you see here is once you go through, the, once you go through uh, this area, you go through the Gulf states, and then, of course, into Afghanistan, you have quite a crescent, if you will, of U.S. military forces displayed. Now, when you add that to the fact that Iran, today in the Wall Street Journal, they were... Uh, they've made the case that Iran is actively training large numbers of combatants to transit from near Tehran through Iraq into Syria, as well as putting Iranian military advisors already on the ground in Syria for some time. They are no longer just assisting, Glenn. They are an active enemy combatant in the Syrian war space. They well, are I mean, this, is uh, not, as, this can't be a surprise to anybody with, uh, with an ounce of intelligence. I mean, I could have told you, I mean, I think I did tell people that this was going to be happening back in 2005. This is clearly um, uh, um, Iran, and they now want to draw us in there. Why would we, for, in our wildest dreams, be drawn into this? Glenn, this is now becoming the battle space, essentially. And when you see where we position military forces, we have it we all lose. around the, the edge. We lose. The edge of this area. Well, the, the Obama administration, for a number of reasons, could find itself in a place where they decide that they're going to strike. The question is, will that be Syria, which looks like they've backed down from, or at some point, what happens here with Iran? President Obama must recognize that if Iran is able to test a nuclear device while, while he is in the Oval Office, Democrats will lose the confidence of the American people in national security for 40 years. Never mind what it means for, and we can't even guess the horrors, what it means for Israeli security, for Saudi security, for the entire region, for Iran to go nuclear. So you can see here, Glenn, this 
should be thought of. This whole area is essentially now the battlefield. You have al-Qaeda in Iraq and the Levant, a group that's cross-border here. You have the Iranians now through the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. They are training people to transit through Iraq. They're pretending that they're pilgrims. And they make their way into Syria. They're fighting. This is now a giant pipeline into this area. And you've got Lebanon with Hezbollah coming across the border okay. here. Right. This whole region, Glenn, angry. is already in the war. That's what people need to understand. It's not one country. It is many countries that are actively involved. They are combatants in what's happening in Syria. You're going to make my head explode, Buck. I got to stop. Thank you, Buck. I appreciate it. Let